One thing I realized, particularly about the black community, is that we, some of us, love the drama. Uh, we like the entertainment, right? And the aspect of entertainment sometimes pushes and moves logic and sound reasoning out of the way. Oftentimes, you see people coming to these wild conclusions based on statistics, right? They'll use statistics to paint ridiculous pictures that a person who's layman or who is easily um, moved or persuaded left or right would easily believe, right? You know, and the other thing about us, specific to Black people, is that, listen, hey, this world, this society loves to see Black people divided, okay? It's just what it is, okay? And I think that Black division actually uh, fortifies the talking points or the perspectives of racists. Like, they love to see what I mean by racist, to be more specific. I'm talking about people who have stereotypical viewpoints of Black people, and that can include Black people, by the way. Now, there are some quote unquote stereotypes that might be true for some black people, but that doesn't mean that it's true for all black people. So, for example, there are some black men who are jobless. There are some black men who are low income. There are some black men who are uneducated, haven't went to college, et cetera, et cetera. But there are also black men who are who have steady, very well paying jobs, are property owners and are well educated. Right. So we're not this monolith. And I have to keep telling people that because uh, the bottom line of the matter is, is that you have more reason to listen to me than other people who are on YouTube acting like black men are a monolith because the person you're listening to now, me, listen, I'm going to make well over six figures this year and not a dime of that, uh, not a single penny of that will come from Google or YouTube at all. So these people, a lot of people who are on social media actually have incentive to perpetrate the nonsense that is going on in our communities, right? The division, right? To the point where people are just yelling and screaming and we can't even have logical, reasonable discussions about the information to come to reasonable conclusions. And the other aspect before I get into the study is this. No one really gives a damn about black men. No one cares what black men think. This is the reason why women don't ask black men. Whenever you hear black women who are talking about black men, particularly on social media, they're always talking about black men, but they never stop for a second to ask a black man particular questions unless they believe that that man is going to basically, you know, swing the narrative in the direction that they already think. OK, those are the black men that are go that they're going to ask questions to the black men that they know agree with their talking points. Right. They're not going to bring in somebody and have an actual intellectual debate about some of the garbage that's coming out of their mouths because they, they can't handle that. They don't want to deal with that. OK, but that's another topic of discussion. So uh, I came across a very interesting article, uh, stereotypes about black fathers. Right. And we always hear this notion about, you know, black men being deadbeat dads, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Uh, you hear lots of stereotypes about black men. Right. And in fact, I believe that the narrative and the even the image of black males in 2022, that the majority of it is just one big ass stereotype. It's not there's not even like the black male image is not even a real reflection of the everyday black man. The stereotype of black fathers as absent and black children as fatherless first introduced over 50 years ago has, like many racial stereotypes, refused to die. So they get into this article uh, where a sociologist said that the increasing rates of out of wedlock births and single mother homes among African American communities uh, signaled the coming destruction of Black families. Okay, and those and these trends were to blame for many of the issues facing the Black community in America. We all know, as it stands now, about seventy percent of Black children are born to parents who aren't married. Okay, I think it's actually higher than seventy percent. Okay, uh, now of course that is. The, the rate of out of wedlock childbirth has increased everywhere, really, in the world. OK, over the course of the last 20, 30 years, people are having more sex. Like people are there's more access. People have more access to more people, you know, through different mediums. And so this is leading to more interaction between humans. And so more humans are doing what they've been doing for all these years, which is having premarital sex. And if you're not careful and if you're not intentional, sex will happen, especially if it's with someone that you like. OK, whether you're married or not married. Some people don't care. And that is what is leading to a lot of these out of wedlock childbirths. But nonetheless, uh, 
President Barack Obama's statement uh, in 2008 in his Father's Day speech. This is very important what this man says here. He says, more than half of all black children live in single parent households. Okay, children who grow up without a father are five times more likely to live in poverty and commit crime, nine times more likely to drop out of school and 20 times more likely to end up in prison. They are more likely to have behavioral problems or run away from home or become teenage parents themselves. And the foundations of our community are weaker because of it. And I agree. You can't you can't disagree with facts here. OK. And I agree with this statement uh, wholeheartedly, okay? Now, there is the other end of this, right? The flip coin of this is that although a lot of Black men who have children out of wedlock or are not with the mothers of their children, that, that number is high for Black men. But what this study actually showed and what this article points out is that Black fathers are more involved with the children that they have in out of wedlock situations more so than men of other races. Okay. Now that can be construed good or bad, depending on the individual. Um, I believe that what you see from these black men, just to say this before I get into it, I believe what you're seeing is that these black men are showing a willingness to try to make things right. But the golden standard should be that a person never gets in that situation to begin with. OK, and I have to start with that. I have to lead with that because I think that's the reason why black fathers are actually more involved. OK, is because they know they have a conscience. Right. They know like them and things ain't going to work out between you and the woman, whatever, for whatever reason. But you still want to be there for your child. And that's what the study is proving that black men are more so like this than other races of men in terms of their willingness to be in the lives of their children. Now, this is not to say that there are not a lot of deadbeat, totally absent black male parents, okay? There's deadbeat, non-absent parents of all racial groups, of all groups of men, okay? Uh, that's not something that is specific or unique to black men. And the study is actually showing that there are actually, percentage-wise, there is a lower percentage of black men who are in uh, you know, situations where they're sharing a child but back and forth between the mother and the father, there are there's a lower percentage of black males who are not involved in the lives of their children compared to other races of men. OK, and this actually came from a 2013 report by the CDC, the Center of Disease and Control. OK, so this is not, you know, some rinky dink statistical resource here. This is a legitimate uh, resource, the CDC. Uh, you know, in most instances. Okay. And I think that this is a legitimate report. There's also other articles that correlate with that study as well, too. Uh, so let's get right into it. Okay. So the CDC reports that black fathers who live with their children are more likely than fathers of other races to provide physical care, bathe, diaper, feed for their young children, read to their children and help their children with their homework all on a daily basis than fathers of other races of men, okay? So this is saying black fathers who live with their children are more likely than fathers of other races to provide physical care, right? So it's telling you that these black fathers are more involved in the day-to-day -day work that's involved in raising their child as opposed to other races of men. The bottom line is there's a lot of good-ass black dads out here, okay? Or black men that want to be good fathers for their children, okay? And that doesn't change for a lot of men, even in a situation where the relationship doesn't work out with the woman. OK, the report also reveals that among dads who don't live with their children. OK, black dads are more likely to be involved in care, including reading to their children, helping them with homework, talking to them about their days and taking them to activities than Hispanic or white dads who live apart from their kids. This is huge. OK, we hear all the time and I've even made videos about the deadbeat black male fathers. OK, which I'm sure that people are taking that video and running with it to make all kinds of conclusions. But the studies, the data is suggesting that black dads, even when they are not living with their children, they're not the primary parent. OK, in the life of the child, these dads are more likely to be involved in the care, including reading, so on and so forth, for their children than Hispanic or white dads who live apart from their kids. This is huge because this is a direct contrast to the narratives that are being pushed about Black fathers, okay? 
non-residential black fathers are also the least likely to report that they're not at all involved with the with uh, involved in the care of their children, including bathing, dressing, uh, dressing, changing diapers and playing with their children. OK, this is huge. Non-residential black fathers are also the least likely to report that they're not at all involved in the care of their children. OK, huge. OK. Now, this was a report by men. So this is another report. They're giving you more data on behalf of mothers. OK, uh, so this is a 2008 study of low income mothers. Researchers found that non-resident white fathers were less involved with their children than African-American and Latino fathers. OK, in a 2018 study, the non-marital births, mothers reported that black fathers shared responsibilities more frequently and displayed more effective co-parenting than Hispanic and white fathers. This is now the report given by women from women. OK, and I do believe that this is true. I've seen both ends of this spectrum personally in my life, and the data kind of correlates uh, what I've seen in my personal life. Now, this is not to say that there's not work that still needs to be done in the Black community, but this definitely challenges the narrative that Black males are just not involved in the lives of their children. It's That's just, you know, that, that is true for some, okay? But the data is suggesting that per capita, Black men are actually more likely to be involved in the lives of their children, whether they're with the mothers living with the child, you know, and the, and the mother or without the mother. Okay, this is what the data here is suggesting. And one great thing here, um, you know, this goes on to talk about fertility and the, the fatherhood rates. Some people like to believe that, you know, black men are just creating all these astronomical babies. But, you know, our, our rate of having children uh, by the age of 40 to 49 is very comparable to other groups of men. 80, as you can see, 75 percent of white men reported having kids. Uh, between uh, at the age of 40 to 49, right? By that age, 80% of black men had kids. 81% of Asian men had kids. 83% of Hispanic men had kids, okay? So black men on average are having, as it says here, 2.4 children, okay? Um, which is on the higher end uh, of the number of children, slightly higher, uh, second only to Hispanic men, okay? Uh, so the main thing and what I want to leave you guys with is this, brothers, you know, um, brothers and sisters, whoever might be watching is this. And this comes from the sincerity of my heart. Like I said from earlier, I'm not here to create this drama or create this division between us. OK, this is not what this is about. What I would hope that we can agree upon is that we want to see our people win. We, I want to see and I hope that you also want to see. Before we start talking about unity and equality with other races of people. Most importantly, we need to have equality and, you know, and good treatment amongst one another. Right. I think that should be something that we demand from one another before we start going out, making it seem like, oh, we, we need to have X, Y and Z. Or, you know, we want we want structures. We want schools. We want grocery stores. We want this. We want that. I want I want I want. But you don't even have good relationships with the men that you're in contact with. You want to be provided for. You want to be protected. You want to be treated a certain way. You want to be treated like a queen. Right. You have to also there are certain things that you should be doing as well, too. So the first thing I'm trying to encourage us to do is look inwardly. Right. We have to look at ourselves and, and, and look at our lives and say, what am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? OK, just stop making children. Before you're married. Right. The way that you do that. OK, is. The golden way to not have premarital sex. I mean, anybody telling you anything other than what I'm about to tell you right now is a, is a liar. OK, a man does not need to have sex with a woman, especially like he should not feel a need to have sex with a woman who do not have kids. OK, and even if she have kids, he sh doesn't he shouldn't need to have sex with her to determine if he wants to marry her. That's might be shocking to you. Right now, there's other ways that you can find out certain things that you might want to know. Right. You might want to know how will the sexual chemistry between me and this individual be, right? And you can only gauge that, I think, through being and spending time with that person, right? But far too often, what the data is showing us is that we are moving into intimate uh, encounters with people who we do not have these types of commitments with. So 
the way that we change this is by changing our minds to do things the respectable way, the right way. Okay. Now, if you're like me, okay. And you're like most people, right. You're like a lot of people. Okay. And maybe you struggle with certain things. You've already experienced certain things, right? So for you to go from that to <laughs> dryness, like no, nothing might be very difficult for you. Right. And the best thing that I can tell you in that regard, really and truly, is that you need to lean upon God. You need to lean upon the Almighty because that's the only way that you're going to be able to navigate this. You need to be with someone. If you're serious now, you need to be with someone. Okay, as they say, get you a Russell. This is a man who had values and principles, right? And they aligned with what Sierra was believing. Okay, so lean upon God for strength. That's the only way that you're going to be able to get through. Because your flesh gonna always pull you down. Your flesh will always tell you to do the fleshly thing. Okay, get active, get busy, all that. No limits, some limits. But at the end of the day, the flesh gonna if the flesh craves what it wants. You have to fight against that urge. Okay, that's the first way. The second way, if you can't fight the urge, then for God's sake. Be responsible and use some form of contraceptive. There's so many forms of birth control and contraceptives and condoms, all so many different things that are available that there's no excuse. There's no excuse for you to be out here just impregnating women or for you, sister, to just be getting pregnant. What I don't want to see, the last thing, the, 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 the worst thing is to be pregnant and be thinking about what you're going to do now, okay? Because that is going to lead you down some dark paths that you're not going to want to go down, okay? So you want to avoid that, okay? So I just broke down golden standard, the the, the freaking six, 70%, right? You're damn near not passing, okay, for real? And then not passing, okay? And I hope that that was clear, okay? And this is just me being level and being real with y'all, right? Because I have to be. I have to be. I'm not here to sugarcoat whatever or manipulate you or try to, you know what I'm saying? No, this is fair, balanced truth. This is fair and balanced, okay? Um, For real. And I'm going to tell y'all, and I want to run that, what I said a few moments ago about a man not needing to have sex with a woman to know, okay? I have to run that because a lot of women, a lot of people don't believe that. A lot of people won't believe that. But the thing about it is this. When you meet somebody, if you are a man and you meet somebody, right, and you are interested in like, you know, you're interested in being a husband, right? You ain't just out here. Oh, I want to feel the vibe and I'm looking for vibes and I'm looking for flings and I'm looking for a traveling partner. I'm looking for a wooty whoop. If you that man, you're not you're not like you, in my opinion, you're disqualified to date the, the sisters who, you know, who listen to me. Right. Because you you don't qualify. The women who listen to me are supposed to be dealing with men who want to be husbands. So they date according to the goal that they have, right? Their goal is to be a husband. So they're not going to just date any random woman and they're not going to be on no just random situation, no random relationship. They're looking for a certain woman. They're looking for what the word calls a wife. See, the scriptures say what? It says, he who found a wife finds a good thing. Okay, he who finds a wife, meaning that that woman was a wife before she ever, before she walked down the aisle with you. Before she became legally yours, before you even met her, she was wife, right? So men who want wives are looking for those women. And when a man, a man knows, a man knows, you, you get with a man, a man spent time with, him, with, with her and he's intentional about what he's looking for. I'm not married, but I do believe a man is going to know. You're going to feel it. You have to, you got to feel it in your soul and spirit like, yeah. Because first of all, it's this. If you have a relationship with the almighty, right? You have a relationship with the almighty, okay? Then you have a spirit, like a Holy Spirit-shaped conscience, right? The Holy Spirit working through you. The word of God says what? Christ said, I will not forsake you. I will come to you, okay? And the scriptures say the Holy Spirit would live in you, right? So if you have a, if you are a, believer who have this holy spirit living in them right some of you may be believers some of you may not be but to give you guys an overview of what i'm talking about here right the word of god says that when we when christ knocks on our door when the lord knocks on our door 
and we open that door to receive the Lord into our lives from that standpoint. And from that moment on, you have a relationship with him, but really it, it really culminates at baptism. It culminates at water baptism. Water baptism is the public display of your allegiance to God, right? It's a, it's a public display of a decision that you made in private, okay, about your dedication and relationship with the Almighty. Okay, now the Lord says what? When you do this and you receive Christ into your life, now your, your spirit, your heart is being renewed, right? The Lord's spirit, therefore, is living in you, okay? And as you grow and learn and do all these things, your conscience will be shaped more and more by the ways of the Almighty. This is critical. This is so important because this is a this is a way of radically changing your life, for real. I'm not even going to like sugarcoat that. This is a way of radical progress in a positive direction for your life. And it's actually the best thing. Like ha for me personally, despite all the other things that I've done in my life, right? I've done some, some bad things. I've done some great things in my life, okay? And despite everything that I've done, the greatest thing I've ever done in my life Oh my God, was not, not give up on myself, right? From the standpoint of trying my best to stay true to my commitment to the Lord. Because most people at one point will believe in God, but some people at a certain point in their life just stop believing for whatever reason, right? They, they fall off. They fall off. It happens. And the greatest thing I've ever done is not give up. I didn't give up. Even when I was lost, even when I knew the truth, but was having a hard time following the truth, even when I was going through different things in my life, despite going through the, or living the truth, right? Because you understand when you're a child of God, the devil going to throw different things at your life. He going to throw some things at you that's going to make it difficult, right? You have to understand that. But it's easily the greatest thing that I've ever done because it provides a foundation, right? You can't build a house without a foundation. So some of y'all trying to build houses on what? On what foundation? Okay. Also too, you know, families that pray together, stay together. Families that go to church together are going to grow together. And I actually read studies and I don't have the sources here, but I read studies that show that when you have that um, black families, a lot of times when you have a husband and wife, a lot of times these are two people who have a relationship with God. Okay. This is an important element. Look at, again, Russell and Sierra. OK, important, important. And I'm here talking about it because it's important to me and important to a lot of other black men who I'm in contact with. I know personally. OK, so again, men who know what they want do not necessarily have to go out here and have sex with a woman before they find out she's his wife. In fact, that man should be ashamed. Of himself to, to even to even test a woman like that, I'm going to be real with you now. I, I got to be real with you. See, when you meet a woman, right, if she's a worldly woman and you perceive her to be like a worldly loose woman, right, that is when a man is going to try to take that relationship to sex because all he's seeing is your, your flesh. Now, if that's how you present yourself, you, you're walking the plank yourself. You're taking yourself on the, on the plank, Okay. But a woman who have morals, a woman who have self-respect, a woman who have dignity and honor in the way that she carry herself, my friend. It would be a shame on any man to test her sexually like that. You shouldn't be pursuing her like that. Right. But a lot of these men don't have the ability or they don't know how to make a decision before sex is involved. It's like you need you need your flesh to authorize what you what, what you what you know you need to do so you need to experience this fleshly thing before you can not nah, it's because your spirit not tuned you not, you need to tune up spiritually okay to perceive what's going on in a relationship for real because i'm gonna tell you right now a woman who's respectable bro hey dog ass men not not gonna have don't can't deal with them can't handle them can't deal with that they can't handle that they, they're not ready for that okay so that's that man and so as a community, as a whole, as a collective, as they say, family, we just got to be more responsible, both men and females. But we know that it starts with men. Men, you need to learn how to say no. You need to learn how to respect yourself. If you're in a situation with a woman, do, 
listen, family, it don't make no sense to really be out here just having sex with a girl that you're not in a lifelong committed relationship with, period. You're wasting your time. And which of you have time to waste? You have to be a damn fool to be thinking, oh, I got time to waste and I can I can do this and do that. Nah, bro, that's foolish. That's foolish, right? You need to be more of a man and take control and take take your life. Take your life, control your life. Control your, exactly, and get some, get like some, you know, some, hey, as they say, some penis discipline, right? Some dick discipline. Stop letting your flesh control you. Stop letting that woman, okay, who wasn't sent by the almighty, control you. Let these whole, the, 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 these loose women, these corrupted women control you. Oh, yeah. We know the traps that y'all brothers fall into. I used to fall into them. Hey, bro, I'm talking about, hey. Some of these women will throw that thing to you, bro. I'm talking about no, no, no. They they going to throw it at you, bro. They throwing that thing. They going to try they trying to break the defense down, bro. You got I'm talking about you got a GP1 defense, all defense, league <laughs> led the league in whatever, right? Blocks and you know and steals. You got the best defense, bro. But some of these women will still throw that thing at you. They going to throw that. So you got to know how to handle that situation. In a real way, you have to. And I think that a wise man knows how to do that. Like, that's one of the things I admire about uh, wise men is that they know how to they can take a compliment from a woman and still hold their cha their chastity, their chasteness. OK, their morality. OK, a woman can compliment you. And it's no it's no harm or no flag, no nothing to you. It's nothing to you. you know how to respectfully decline some advances. Yes, my brother, when you start to get on your purpose, when you living in your mission, trust and believe me when I tell you this, you will have to make you will have to decline some things in your life, because if you can't decline some offers that are being made to you, you're going to you're going to be led astray all over the place and you're going to be hey, you're going to be a single father messing around and you don't want to be in that. You don't want to be in that situation. Right. So this is my thoughts on this particular topic of discussion uh, about black males journey to fatherhood and where we currently are in America in 2022. You know what? Hey, shout out to the dads who are doing their utmost to be good fathers in the lives of their children. Utmost respect to y'all brothers. You know, hey, listen, the best thing I could say is this. Keep teaching your kids, right? Keep teaching them. Keep disciplining them. I'm proud of you brothers for doing that. Keep loving them. Remember to instill in them not just friendship, not just this friendship, but this sense of understanding that you are their dad. You are their father. You are the parent. You are there not to be the friend of that child, but to be their parent. Always remember this in terms of how you deal with your child. I'm not telling you to be harsh and abusive, right? You have to love them, but remember to keep the discipline and the respect paramount. That's number one, right? And uh, the other thing I would tell you guys to do is, hey, man, listen, invest in your kids, right? Invest in their futures. Put something aside for them, right? You know, there's lots of different things you can do to financially set your child up for success, right? You can add them on your on one of your, um, you know, low balance credit cards, right? At the age, I believe it's like 16 or 17, you can add them to that account as an authorized user. They don't even have to have a card, okay? But their social and name is, is tied to it. You're building up their credit. So that by the time they're 18, 19 years old and you give them some money, maybe, or maybe they go earn some money for a down payment for, you know, a new car, right? Or whatever it is, a house or whatever, their, their credit is already built up, right? Okay. You can invest for them. Okay. You can hold some stocks, some cryptocurrencies for them, right? You can obviously get, you, you need to have insurance. You need to set them up so that they don't have to experience some of the hardships that some of us had to go through, right? So if you're doing it, hey, kudos to you. But this is just a reminder. This is just motivation for you, brothers, to keep doing your thing, man. I see y'all respect it, man. And uh, hey, man. And to all these men out here who not stepping up to the plate, hey, man. Your excuses, <laughs> bro, they like assholes. You know what I'm saying? We all got them and they all stink, bro. Okay. Ain't no, ain't no, like. If you have or you're making excuses for why you're not there for your child, I don't know how else to say this other than to say, like, bro, like, you're not really a man. Like, you're not really a man. You, you have this victim mentality, like this victim mindset. And I know something hurts you, right? I know you're hurt 
over some situation. I know some situation have you emotionally distraught. And I get that. We've we've been there. I've been there. But I, I ain't saying I know exactly what you going through, but we've all been there, right? As fathers. So what I'm saying is, bro, control your emotions, man. And love your child. Put your child first, man. That's your seed. That's your seed. Like, share, subscribe, comment below. Tell me what y'all think. I would love to hear your comments. To be chat again, it's Urban Politics, and I'm checking out on you. Deuce.